You've all heard the leftist tropes, hang the landlord, parasitical scum. You know from the commies who believe that Landlord Avenue is one paved with gold to get the already wealthy to be able to skip down it with the assistance of others. And this is coming from the same people who can't even show up on time to work on the offhand chance that they even have a profession or job that isn't funded by our tax dollars as a means to spread their toxic ideology. Well, let me share with you my story of how I became this accidental landlord and how that avenue is not exactly paved with the gold it's rumored to be. At the end of 2017, my wife and I decided to leave Los Angeles, given the fact that the quality of life there was diminishing at a rapid rate. Not only did it sometimes take an hour and a half to drive home five miles from the beach, from the Santa Monica Pier, but the homeless started to spring up like weeds in an untended garden in a neighborhood where previously weeds were rare. So we started looking in areas where you could get a ton more for your money, way, way more than LA, and we made an offer that didn't go through. And my wife's ability to stay in the United States as she does not have a green card was coming to a close. So we decided to visit her family in Canada for the next six months. But she found a home that she wanted me to look at while we were there. And our offer for a major fixer upper was accepted. Cha-ching! Now, we were set to take possession of the house the following day that we were set to enter America and we ran into problems at the border. The CBP officer, rightly or wrongly, believed that one of my wife's statements that she made was interpreted as an intention to immigrate while entering the United States, which you cannot do. They were originally going to deny us entry altogether, but they gave us three months within the United States, and then we had to hightail it out of there and do the green card from outside of the country, abroad. And I cannot emphasize how grateful I am to the Biden administration as they allow illegals to stream across the southern border from countries all over the world, from China to Afghanistan to Yemen, and they waltz right over the southern border. The joke is we should go down to the Rio Grande and cross in an effort to get my wife in legally. So we literally took possession of the house the day after we entered into America and we purchased the property with the intention of it being our permanent home. Instead, we had three months to fix up a home in major need of some TLC so that we could rent it out while we were gone and not lose most of our life savings. And we did that for three months straight. There literally was not a day, I believe, that I did not enter into Home Depot. And my average was two or three times a day. And every single employee there knew me. And one time, suffice to say, we put in tens of thousands of dollars and about 90% of our non-sleeping hours went in to fixing up the home, decorating it, making sure that the lawn was tended. And so our three months expired, we had to leave, and we had set it up with an Airbnb management company to manage our home in an unincorporated part of town where you were allowed horses and chickens, and we hightailed it out of the country. And honestly, for a month, for a little bit more, we were doing very, very well. We had a really good company, an honest company, managing it, and we could use the revenues to pay our mortgage, to pay the insurance, to pay for whatever repairs, and we had a little tiny bit left over to boot. And it was going great. It was really going nicely. Until our asshole neighbor complained to city officials who promptly sent us a letter to shut our Airbnb down or be fined thousands of dollars. Yeah, because you are the true owner 
of the land when bureaucrats pressured by hotels tell you what you can and cannot do with the property. So much fun. So from outside of the country, based on word of mouth, I hired a local property manager who promptly rented it out to a couple of knucklehead brothers who threw raves with strobe lights and charged for admission to our house. And of course, drew the ire of all of our neighbors to the point where I received a call from the police while abroad. They found me in the police database, I guess, informing me that we were about to be declared a public nuisance unless we managed to get these horrendous people out of our property. And this is how bad it was. Even though COVID was going on, they were deemed such a threat to the community that an eviction was allowed to go through. And eventually, they left the premises. Leaving the house, do you think it was in perfect condition? Uh, if you guessed, incorrect. They left us with shambles. Every single piece of furniture that we had bought, that we had affixed in the house, had been destroyed. They left us an $1,800 unpaid water bill that had piled up after the months that they had been there. Everything was dirty. It was, according to the management company, the worst a tenant had ever left a house and they were absolutely sickened by it. It took months to clean everything up. And as I could not leave the country that we were in to travel back to the United States because of COVID and I could not get back into the country to see my family and my wife, of course, thanks to the government, is not allowed back in until she has a green card, I had to pay through the nose to have it all done. And I was saved slightly by my mother and her friend driving 1,000 miles and spending a month of their valuable time in order to fix things and get everything done. Otherwise, that property would have been taken over by squatters. And speaking of squatters, a night before my mom got there, and thank God it wasn't on the same evening, a meth head squatter from next door broke in and stole virtually everything and destroyed the 75-inch TV that we had hanging up. They found it next door, just destroyed, not used. Thanks, squatters. So the parasitical landlord that the leftists will call me lost tons of money, months of rent while we were fixing everything and all the hard work that we had put into creating a really nice environment and a beautiful home. Two people that had absolutely no respect or decency. And yet you continue to call the landlord parasites. So finally we caught a break and we actually got some really great renters that pay the rent on time, that take care of the property and are genuinely nice guys that create custom vans. And we found them randomly. I found them not my management company. These guys are decent, good citizens. And of course, our asshole neighbor decided to call the city officials once again because he didn't like the fact that they had their large vans parked in the driveway and he thought that it might be violative of some ordinance that the city had. Nice guy, right? Fortunately for us, given the fact that this is a horse zone, vans were allowed and our tenants stayed. So what does this mean for us? We now are able to barely clear the home insurance that State Farm charges that, by the way, keeps rising. The 8% that goes to the property management company that is incredibly mediocre. I have to pay for the sewers. I have to pay the property taxes. I have to pay for the home warranty to help out in case something breaks, the tree trimming and the gardening. So when I see memes like, thanks for paying my mortgage with a mocking fat cat, I just laugh. Especially because as I film this, I'm currently in the middle of paying $20,000 for a pool renovation because it was turning green as the water wasn't flowing properly. Not to mention the fact that the palm trees might be affecting the plumbing system and I might have to pay extra to remove them. Do you know how big a percentage 
of yearly rental income. That is, it's substantial. And so what does this mean for this fat cat parasitical landlord that you're looking at? It means I'm losing money on the house, not the tenants, me. And it means that I have to spend a ton of time interviewing people, taking care of it, making sure that everything goes well and everybody gets paid and that the tenants are happy because they're decent people. So what you say, your house went up in value. You're still making money. Yes, that might be the silver lining if you're looking at it from afar, but when you examine up close, when you look at a greater resolution, then you'll find that after I pay the taxes on the capital gains, the commissions to the realtor, the closing costs, and then you have to take into account the inflationary pressures that have eaten away at that difference that I might have left over where the buying power, that which I actually will be able to purchase something with, will remain approximately the same as when I purchased the house. And because our tenants are actually really great guys, when my wife wanted to sell last year, I told her, no, we're going to let them stay as long as they want. I treat others as I would want to be treated. And I've had landlords that decided to turn my apartment that I was in for some time into condominiums and we all had to leave and that was no fun. And I don't wanna do that to somebody else if I don't absolutely have to. And now the house is down substantially in value since that moment. And I'm actually 100% okay with that, believe it or not. Why? Because I sleep great at night. Because I know that I'm a moral and decent person and my conscience does not bug me. What I'm not okay with, however, are a bunch of socialists and communists that don't understand the amount of work that people put into originally being able to save to purchase a property and attempting to give sometimes ungrateful tenants a really nice place to live. And the fact that some renters use the existing laws that are passed year after year to abuse their landlords. And they also have no idea how much it costs to maintain a property from insurance to property taxes, to repairs, to legal costs that we incurred when attempting to evict the ravers. And yet these same people use their energy to denigrate those who work hard rather than imitating the successful behavior to achieve the same. And to think of all those people who believe that being a landlord is profitable. <laughs> yeah, it could be if you get incredibly lucky and everything goes your way, you just might barely be able to exceed the opportunity cost of investing your money into stocks, into the S&P 500. But that is rare and it takes work. But the jealous, the lazy, those who want to feel better about their lot in life by denigrating the successful landlords as parasites, while at the same time ignoring that my story is more the norm than the exception. I suggest to them that they turn that focus and energy inwards and create something rather than projecting their negativity externally. Transmit that energy into building something for yourself. And then one day, maybe they too could buy a property that disrespectful, ungrateful deadbeats destroy, or their neighbor makes life hell for them, or the government, God bless their bleeding hearts, believe that squatters have more rights to the property than they do as the owner, who has to continue, of course, to pay the mortgage and property taxes. In the end, jealousy and denigration of others does not serve them in the least, yet the means and the hate keep on coming. I'll say it once and I'll say it again, concentrate on making your lot in life a little bit better, a little tiny fraction bit better every single day. And the compounding effects will elevate you slowly at first, but then more and more rapidly. And not only will you be better off, but society will be better off as well. And maybe you too will be able to graduate into the role of being a parasitical landlord like myself. And if you have the same view when you change positions, 
that you do now, by all means, then we can have a discussion. <laughs>